What is missing is a channel called Primitive Technology. If you've been on YouTube any amount of time in the last five years, chances are you've seen one of his videos. This guy in the woods wearing only blue shorts and using only his hands makes stuff. Stuff like huts, weapons, furnaces, tools, pretty much anything you might want to make your first night in Minecraft. It might not sound super interesting at first, but his first video got 30 million views. In fact, the most memorable thing about his videos isn't a thing at all. It's the lack of something. Talking. In all of his 51 videos, the guy making them doesn't say a word. Using this unique combination of making things by hands in the woods in complete silence, Primitive Technology amassed an empire of over 10 million subscribers in four years of posting videos to YouTube. And then about a year ago, without any explanation, he just stopped posting videos. I decided to look into what happened to Primitive Technology, and in the process I learned a lot more about him and what he learned out in those woods that helped him amass over 10 million subscribers, almost a billion video views, and spin off an entire genre of YouTube content before he completely disappeared almost a year ago. Let's find out what happened to Primitive Technology. 2015 was a simpler time on YouTube. YouTube Rewind for the year asked us to whip and nene, reference Katy Perry's Out of Place Shark, Shia LaBeouf's Just Do It meme, and Freddy Fosbear winning a dance battle against a bunch of brand friendly creators. Some of the creators who got screen time were PewDiePie, Markiplier, Casey Neistat, Marquise Brownlee, and Jenna Marbles. So even though YouTube was already showing a bit of preference for mainstream creators like John Oliver and James Corden, stop messaging me pictures of him. We do not even look alike. No, we're not the same person. In retrospect, it was a pretty good year for the platform and online content creation in general. Just looking at the like to dislike ratio of this rewind, compared to more recent years is a pretty good indicator that YouTube was way more in tune with what people wanted back then, and it was out of this environment that Primitive Technology was born. On May 2nd, 2015, Primitive Technology posted his first video, Waddle and Dob Hut. In the video, he just builds a hut. It doesn't sound like a viral video, but on June 20th, someone posted this video to Reddit, where it got over 44,000 upvotes. If somebody at your work told you to watch an 11 minute video of a shirtless Australian guy stacking mud on top of other mud, you'd probably immediately report them to HR. But if you actually watched the video, you'd probably get really excited about it and ask your coworker what you thought he'd build next. It's a really interesting phenomenon where these videos on paper don't sound like they'd have a lot of appeal, but something about them just really draws you in. You'd probably also mention to your coworker how refreshing it is to watch a YouTube video and not be loudly told to like and subscribe within the first five seconds, along with four minutes of incoherent rambling about Patreon and mobile game ads before the actual content starts, but that's beside the point. All we can hear in primitive technology videos is the sound of his work and the sounds of nature. Whether that be smacking rocks together, slopping mud into bricks, or chopping a tree down, there's always something therapeutic and even hypnotic about the cadence of his videos. After the first video on the channel took off, the content really started to flow. It seemed the creator behind the videos really enjoyed making videos and interacting with his fans in the comments. And he even made a WordPress blog where he could interact with fans and post about his videos. Views and subs were flocking to his channel, but Primitive Technology was about to find out that with great internet popularity comes great intellectual property theft. When you create something popular online, the first thing people do is steal it and repost it as their own. I can tell you from experience, this does not feel very good, and every creator reacts to it a little bit differently. The creator of Primitive Technology decided to fight back. On the Facebook forums, he identified himself as John Plant. He explained that one page alone stole his first video and got 17 million views on it, raking in tens of thousands of dollars that rightfully belonged to John. That's a lot of mud bricks. In an AMA on Reddit years later, he would explain his job before YouTube was as a lawn mowing contractor. John wasn't some spoiled rich YouTuber kid trying to protect an empire, he was just trying to switch careers from mowing grass to making fire. 
Even today, if you search primitive technology on Facebook, there are dozens of imposter pages stealing John's videos and re-uploading them as their own. But mix in with the freebooters is another fixture of online content creation. Rip-off channels. There's a fine line with content creation between being inspired by someone else's ideas and just straight up yoinking their content. YouTube creators have had some pretty famous spats over idea stealing, and sometimes it's more obvious than others. With primitive technology, he didn't just inspire spin-off videos, he inspired an entire spin-off genre of YouTube channels. Primitive Technology KH, Primitive Technology Idea, Primitive Unique Tool, Primitive Survival Tool, Primitive Skills, Primitive Life, Survival Skills Primitive. I could go on literally all day. And these channels took advantage of the YouTube algorithm and made their videos to get recommended next to John's, getting millions of views on their own. Some of these channels put their own unique spin on Primitive Technology and added some interesting value to the genre. Some spin-off channels, however, were a little less genuine. Some of these channels were so blatantly faking their videos it inspired memes and even a Gus Johnson video where he throws rocks in his underwear. Some of the suspicious spin-off channels would pretend to use hand tools like John did, and then they would just jump cut to have mysteriously straight lines cut into the earth. Maybe ancient aliens were helping them, I don't know. And they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but copying everything down to the blue cargo shorts? Come on, man. This particular channel also helped start the stupidest trend of 2019, where people would dig holes, put dead fish in them, and then start the camera and pretend they were catching a fish. <laughs> fish don't act like that. This is a dead fish. There's some guy in the river holding a dead fish. He's got his arm like three feet in a hole. <laughs> Puppeteering a dead fish. This is actually kind of disgusting. Look, see when he jumped in the hole? You can see all that muddy water go out into the river. They dug that little channel. That's where the guy had his arm through. <laughs> this guy is having the fight of his life with a dead fish. A lot of these ripoff channels got to a point where they weren't even ripping off primitive technology anymore. They were just ripping each other off. All the titles are like Secret Ancient Luxury Underground Swimming Pool, and their videos show them building more and more complex structures by hand. And then the builds always find a way to incorporate thousands of gallons of stagnant water. It's gotten to the point where some of these houses look like Frank Lloyd Wright got drunk and tried to build a beautiful via to cultivate mosquitoes in Southeast Asia. Even with all the freebooters, ripoffs, and spin-off channels making waves in John's water, his channel kept on growing, and John set his sights on projects bigger than YouTube. In October of 2019, John announced he would be doing an AMA on Reddit to promote his new book. Behind the scenes, John had been writing a book where he shares all his knowledge about building and crafting in the wild. Overall, the thread seemed like a great success, and we learned a lot more about John and his channel, like where he gets his ideas, whether he has a girlfriend or not, and some talk about future business ideas. One suggestion a lot of people made was for John to host primitive technology survival workshops, which I think would be really cool. If this ever happens, expect to see a video from me where I travel to Australia to do the workshop and then I just die within the first two hours from a drop bear attack. After the AMA on November 1st, John posted two more videos. Then he completely stopped and hasn't posted anything online since then. The comments on his last video are almost all people begging him to come back. And it seems like 2020 would have been a perfect year for a YouTube channel to teach the world how to rebuild from nothing. I did a little digging and found a post on the Primitive Technology subreddit explaining why John has been missing for almost an entire year. One of the mods wrote, Hi all, due to some concerns from the subreddit, I've reached out to John Plant, owner of Primitive Technology YouTube channel, for an update on his status during the pandemic and because he hasn't released new videos for a few months now. I'm happy to be able to report that John is doing well and everything's fine. He thanks us for our concern and has a nice surprise for us. He's unfortunately not allowed to reveal any details at this time, but John is currently taking a break from YouTube because he's working on a project for a cable network. Hope you all stay safe and healthy. This post is from about four months ago, so I'd expect to see an announcement about John's new TV show anytime now. It'll be cool to see if a YouTuber can move from online video content to make a successful TV show. Apparently a handful of YouTubers have done it before, but I've never heard of any of these people, so they don't count. Will John return to YouTube once his show is done? Will any of his huts survive this year? Will the Cambodian guys put more dead fish into holes for views? 
These answers we don't know, but at least now you know what happened to primitive technology. Thanks for watching. Stay weird, internet. See you next time.